It's uh, 2.15, so let's resume with the open session of the council meeting. Uh, we're going to jump back into the agenda and we'll be dealing with two concepts that will be presented to the council. I want to remind the council that before NHGRI can publish a funding opportunity announcement, it has to be uh, approved in a public uh, meeting. We always use the open session of our council meetings for concept clearance, and that way the council members are familiar with everything that goes out the door at NHGRI. So uh, Luis Cubano is going to lead the discussion here. I give you a presentation about the two, con two concepts. Uh, for each one of them, we will uh, invite questions and comment from council. And when the discussion has run its course, uh, I'll call for a vote uh, to approve the concept. So uh, Luis, are you gonna begin with, uh, Natalie? Yeah, you brought up the slides, thank you. You're beginning with the F99K00, correct, Luis? Yeah. All right, why don't you take it from here, please? Good afternoon, everybody. Today, we will present to you two concepts that we are developing to address the suggestions included in the Training and Education Task Force report that were presented by Dr. Wendy Shong during the February Council open session. As we follow the task force advice, we selected these two concepts as increasing diversity in the genomics workforce was highly emphasized in the task force report. We will start by presenting the concept pre-doctoral to postdoctoral transitional work to promote diversity. Next slide. So for this concept, we are going to take advantage of a relative new NIH mechanism that supports the transition of graduate students to a postdoctoral position. Our target are going to be students from diverse backgrounds. The F99K00 mechanism facilitates completion of the doctoral dissertation and transition to postdoctoral research by providing the necessary funding to support the student and also funding during the postdoctoral phase of training. Uh, more importantly, it supports the students to a transition point where many diverse students exit the career uh, pipeline. Next. With this concept, we're seeking to increase the diversity of the postdoctoral trainees and hopefully in the future of the genomic workforce in general. The concept will provide funds for students that are two years away from graduation. The eligible students will be from diverse backgrounds as described in the NIH interest in diversity notice. That is uh, students from underrepresented racial and ethnic groups, individuals with disabilities, individuals from disadvantaged backgrounds and women. Next. The budget will consist uh, of an F and a K uh, section, and we will follow the NIH guidelines for each uh, section of the budget. We will provide support for the student, and we'll provide also support for the research as a, at the postdoctoral level. Participants will pursue the training on a full-time basis. The project award period includes a two years of support for the students and uh, three years of support for the postdocs. The applications to be funded will depend on the number of uh, applications received and the quality of the applications. Uh, next. And I would like to thank the members of the training team for developing the concepts. Uh, this moment, we would like to start a discussion of the first one. And the council discussion leaders for this one are Dr. Botkin and Dr. Rich. Uh, Dr. Botkin, do you have any uh, comments? Yeah, thanks, Louis. Uh, I really don't. I think this is an excellent idea. Uh, I understand that it's not been around long enough to have much of a understanding of the track record at the NIH about how this mechanism uh, is going to work. Uh, I was able to see a National Cancer Institute uh, a similar a program that's been issued already, but um, I guess one question was, is that a correct assessment that this is so new that we don't have much experience with it? 
Uh, I think my only second set of issues that you uh, uh, now touched on with these slides is the complexity of the NIH policy about uh, diversity. Uh, we all know how hugely important that is. And uh, this is really, of course, building on the strategic plan and the emphasis on diversity in the strategic plan, both for research participants and for the research uh, community more broadly. So this is, seems to me like a wonderful mechanism to really promote uh, the young scholars uh, early in their <clears throat> career. I think ultimately when the guidance is uh, published on this, it will have to have a fair amount of uh, um, information on um, the definition of diversity and what different sorts of individuals can uh, take advantage of uh, uh, this mechanism. So all in all, very supportive. Yeah, uh, well, when we uh, publish the FOA, we will direct the individuals to the notice uh, on diversity. That way we don't have to repeat the language as uh, we are not allowed to do that, but it will have a link to it. Okay. Any other comments? So this is uh, Steve. I, I agree with Jeff completely uh, in terms of the importance of, of this uh, initiative. It's important to really make a significant impact on, uh, on this area in genome sciences. And the only questions really are, how, how much money can you put to this? Uh, more is better. And uh, there's always going to be some um, some give and take in terms of the budget. Uh, it's interesting that you said, you know, depending on the applications you get is somewhat of a depending, is, is sort of predictive of how many you can, can fund. So um, I think that's going to be a critical component. But also critical is, is to make certain that eligible individuals know about it. And so I would really encourage, you know, broad-based advertising, however you can imagine to do that. And obviously tracking of what happens afterwards, uh, keeping track of these people. So uh, again, I'm, I'm very supportive. It's an important initiative and uh, a, a step in the right direction. Thank you. Yeah, we have developed a website that highlights uh, funding opportunities for diverse populations. That's a um, relative new website. And we'll um, go ahead and use the website. We also started doing some Twitter uh, advertising, if we want to call it that way, about our uh, training programs. So hopefully using social media and reaching out to our PIs to um, mass emails, we'll be able to get a good response rate. I've got Hal Dietz and Sharon Plon, please. Uh, thank you for that presentation, Luis. Um, other institutes such as NCI have not specifically targeted this funding mechanism for uh, increasing diversity. Um, I fully uh, applaud its use in that manner, but um, also recognize that this is a very sensitive uh, career transition time uh, for many emerging uh, scientists. And I'm wondering, uh, does the Institute have broader plans of using this fun uh, funding mechanism to attract additional people into genetics and genomics? So we will develop a, a parallel announcement similar to what we do with the F31, where we have a, a parent F31 and a diversity F31. There'll be a way to, uh, address your, uh, your concern. Thank you. Sharon, are you good? I, I had the same question as how. Okay, all right. Other questions or comments for Luis about this particular concept? Okay, uh, hearing none, let me ask for uh, a motion to approve this concept. I move. Dean Rich, so move. And I heard a second in there as well. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstaining? All right. Thank you very much. Luis, you want to move us along to the K-18 concept, please? <laughs> 